This is part three of the Ultimate Wii U modding guide, and a lot of people have been asking me, are these instructions still relevant? Do they still work in 2020? And they all work apart from what I'm showing at the moment, which was the first instruction I gave you, which was how to change the DNS. Just completely ignore that, because I don't think Nintendo are gonna be doing any more updates in the future for the Wii U. Now, another question a lot of you have been asking is about the virtual console injects and there were some absolutely beautiful ones in that collection that was on the wii u iso forum well i'm afraid the wii u iso forum is long gone and everybody's been hunting for these um there may be a link in my description that has maybe some uh n64 things and a and a few emulator forwarders uh, so check that out and you know this stuff's really good because you get the kind of different options of widescreen, uh, dark filters on there, and also controller support, which is absolutely awesome. Now, let's get into the modding. First thing I'm gonna show you is how to mod Wii titles. And this is really interesting because there's games like Mario Kart 8 that can be modded, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild can be modded, and also Super Smash Bros. Now, there's a huge modding community there. So the first thing you do is open up your homebrew launcher. Now, the homebrew launcher is done exactly the same way we did it before, which is through the browser, just going onto the exploit site and pressing on that. Next thing we're gonna do is go onto the homebrew app store. Now, this is great because this means we can get the latest version of this software that we're using to mod. And this program is called SD Caffeine and it's really simple to use, really easy, and you'll just find it by kind of scrolling down. I've also got RetroArch installed there and stuff, but I'm gonna show you that a lot later in the video. So there's SD Caffeine. Just install it. Best thing about this is it's all installed. It will automatically search for updates, and then the next time you go in the App Store, if you need to update it, it should appear in the menu. So now you've installed that on the Wii U, you take your card out and basically put it inside your PC. And then you've got to do some things on the PC side of stuff. So you've got to actually put the mod packs in there. And I'm just checking here to see that it was installed correctly. It's in the Wii U apps folder, SD caffeine. So the installation was fine. But what we need to do is make a home for the mods. Now, the way we do that is we create a new folder, but the new folder name has to be SD Caffeine. And inside that folder, you have to have some really specific names. And each name is the title key for each game. So as you know, we used title keys previously uh, using Tech Moon's injector. Now, what you can do is I've put the title key in the description. And if you look, there's different versions. So there's the USA, the European, and the Japanese one. And these are the title keys for Mario Kart 8. So what you have to do is basically rename that folder to the name of the title key. And I would say European. If you've been following this guide, then uh, it's pretty much set up for a European Wii U. Put the title key in and then that identifies it and kind of links it to that game so any mod files that will be chucked in there will just be for mario kart 8 and here's where you get it game banana there's the mario kart 8 deluxe pack there's lots of different versions i think there was a dark mario kart 8 as well um loads of little fun mods and stuff but you've got to make sure you download the right version because there's a version that's made for consoles and there's one that's made for the emulator on the PC. So make sure you're getting the console version here. You download the file and you basically need to grab these. You need to grab these files and these contain all the mod information and you need to chuck it into that special title key folder that you've just made on the SD caffeine on the root of your SD card. So 
So you copy that stuff over to your SD card and then eject it, of course, because you don't want to cause any damage. Now reset your Wii and load up that homebrew launcher again via the internet browser. Now I've seen forwarders for SD and caffeine, which would be really useful. Um, if any of you guys in the comments can let me know about that, that would be great. So you first have to load up SD caffeine to get those mod files activated. And that will actually just kick you out straight into the Wii U system menu. Then you select your title. So we've got Mario Kart here. It may take a little while to load up. You know, it's, it's just got to look for those mod files. And then you launch it through SD Caffeine. And it is now a modified version of Mario Kart 8. And look at that, isn't that awesome? Now, another one you can do is Super Smash Bros. And these Smash Bros people are absolutely crazy. Their community, they do so much stuff. They, you know, do all the skins. There's brand new levels. There's, oh God, so much intros, soundtracks. So this is an absolutely stonking file. It is huge. I think it's about five gig and it takes a while to download. So um, have fun with that, you know. Ignore these kind of warnings because you usually get them on Google when, when the file is absolutely massive. So make sure you download that. Luckily, inside that folder, they've already renamed the folder as the title key for Smash Bros. So you can just copy that one over. But of course, extracting it from the raw file is going to take even longer. So make yourself a cup of tea. Now, as you can see here, I've loaded SD caffeine before. I've resetted my machine and now we're going to load Super Smash Bros. This may take a little while to load. But we get onto the menu and this is so cool. They've totally redone the menu. They've got like a new FMV intro and you can see the options here. They're not touchscreen at the moment. They're D-pad. But um, you can tell that this is a homebrew version because it says Nam 8 and uh, GG Bro, which is quite funny. But gives you lots of options. Create albums and uh, share all your scores. Uh, do all, all, all the kind of normal stuff that you can with Smash Bros. Now, the problem with this is this is very sped up. You have to add all this stuff. So as soon as you load it for the first time, you sat there pressing A for so long because it wants you to listen to every single soundtrack. It wants you to go through every single costume, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, it can be a bit crazy. <laughs> but once you do get it loaded, it is absolutely awesome to have a modded version of Smash Bros. And you can also do this with Zelda. So have fun with that and uh, mess about. But now what we're going to do is we've totally covered the Wii U side of stuff. We're going to now homebrew the Wii that is inside the Wii U. Now, Jack Sorrell has got an absolutely fantastic video about this. And you're going to need Jack's files to do this. So you copy the files that are below, Jack Sorrell's files, over to the SD card, reset, and then go onto homebrew launcher again. Once you are on Homebrew Launcher, you need to load up a new program. And if you've copied it over correctly, um, the new program should actually be there. And that is called Whoop Hacks. So you load up Whoop Hacks. Now, what Whoop Hacks does is enables you to exploit and uh, you use the Me channel. So it basically injects the Me channel. So you press A to inject the Me channel. I've already done all of this, but I'm going to show you again just for demonstration purposes. And there you go, we've successfully injected it. Now you have to exit out of all of that and go onto your Wii. Now you're gonna need a Wiimote for this and this must be 
the original Wemo, it can't be the Motion Plus one because the Motion Plus is just designed for the Wii U. So if you do use the Motion Plus, it can freeze halfway through, cause a lot of trouble. So there you go, it's kicking into the Wii. And as you can see, I've already got some stuff on there, but let's pretend it's not there. And you just go onto your Me channel. Now, the problem with this is it takes ages to load. So you're going to sit there waiting, thinking, oh, my God, it's crashed. And then eventually it's going to come up with the uh, press one to continue. So really be patient with that one. And you will come up with this menu. And this menu enables you to install the Homebrew channel. So there you go. Use the D-pad to navigate and install it. So I'm just overriding the one that I've got there at the moment. And that's it. It's that simple to homebrew the virtual Wii. Now, the virtual Wii, once you've exited the homebrew channel, will go into 4x3 mode. So what you need to do is you need to upload Multi-Mod Manager. And if you've installed the jack files correctly, then it should have a red homebrew channel. Now, this red homebrew channel is set at 16x9. So any content that you're going to do is going to come out at 16x9, which is kind of what you want, or 4x3. If, if, if you're strictly old school, you can go that way. So you just simply load up the WAB manager, you install that, and then replace the icons and use the red icon to launch. But at the very end, you need to make sure that you remove that me channel so you restore it basically get rid of that injection so go back all the way back into whoop hacks and make sure that that one is actually restored now you can see that i've provided some emulators the emulators here are really awesome and there's a lot of stuff on there um you can see that they've got all their old folders that they've set up but what i really recommend is that you copy this retro arch folder it is quite a big folder uh, and what you need to do is copy this over to your root of your SD card. Now, this is cool because it sets up everything. It does it in a really nice overlay as well. And you may think, oh, is this an out of date version of RetroArch? Well, you can just update the cores on there and then you're going to get all the latest cores, which is awesome because RetroArch is fantastic. So. What you do is you also copy over the install folder there. So you've copied over the install like we've done before. And now you've got all the forwarders for your emulators on the whoop installer. I tend to pretty much copy everything in that folder across for the emulators so that you get all the little all the little bits that you need. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a learning process with these emulators. Each one of them has their own knack or own style like the PSP one requires a module for you to actually install on the homebrew channel as well so have fun experimenting with them but RetroArch seems to be the most powerful one so once you reset you should have this lovely little forwarder and then you can boot into RetroArch and you can see it's got a lovely overlay you can put your games on a directory and then go through them and uh, kind of load your retro stuff up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are still Wii Uing, uh, having some good time at home modding them. If you have any suggestions for extra videos I should do, if you have any really cool things you'd wish for me to cover, then please let me know in the comments. And also I'll try to help anybody that I can. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.